Hi, my name's Emma Klammer, and I'm talking to you today on behalf of the EDI committee. That's the Equality, Diversity and Inclusion Committee. And uh, we're a group that are made of students and support staff and teachers. So we come from all walks of life from across the college community. And we work together to make sure that we're raising issues and having discussions and putting at the forefront anything to do with equality, diversity and inclusion in order to make our college environment as safe, healthy and um, exciting and interesting college community as possible. Today, our focus is on this idea that love hurts. We've heard this phrase before. It's in song lyrics. We've probably heard it in a film. We might even have a discussion with somebody. They're complaining about their boyfriend or their girlfriend. Somebody flippantly turns back and says, well, love hurts. What do you expect? But actually, one of the things we need to think about is, should love hurt? And what about that line between love hurting and being abusive? So our focus today is to reflect on spotting and stopping abusive relationships. And we've got three aims. Our first aim is to know how to spot abuse in a relationship, even in the early stages. Um, unfortunately, in our lives, this might be something that will happen and we will want to know how to spot it so that we can help prevent it escalating. Or if it's in our own relationships, know how to come out of and change those relationships. So we want to understand why this is relevant to you and your peers. You might be sat there thinking, everyone I know seems to be in healthy relationships. Why is this relevant? Well, hopefully by the end, you'll see why it is relevant. And part of being a member of society and a member of Barton Peveril community is we do have a responsibility to each other to look after each other when we can. And hopefully that will come through in this. And then our final aim is to help prevent abuse and importantly to know where help can be found when we see it or when we recognize it in our own relationships. So first little question for you is which are, which of the following are examples of abuse? Um, and it might be that at the end of this slide, your tutor might pause it and you might have a discussion about it. It might be at home that you have a pen and paper and jot some answers down. Um, it could be that you kind of do a little thumbs up, thumbs down for yes or no. Don't really mind, but have a think about what are your answers to this? Which of the following are examples of abuse? Putting you down, someone putting you down, is that an example of abuse? Denying something has happened, which you know has happened. So that's somebody telling you, no, it wasn't like that when you know it was. Someone threatening to leave you. Someone threatening to harm themselves if you leave them. Checking your phone or your social media. So monitoring it, particularly potentially monitoring it without your permission. Making you feel guilty if you go out without them. telling you what clothes to wear. So have a reflection on those and decide which ones are examples of abuse. Okay, so the answer is all of them are examples of abuse. All of them are examples of someone crossing a line in what is acceptable behavior in a relationship. We're gonna unpick that a bit more now. So here are some facts. You don't have to be physically abused to be in an abusive relationship. We quite often look at violence and physical abuse as the only sign of abuse, and it's just not true. Abuse can be psychological, emotional, can even be financial. Whatever your age, gender or sexuality, you can be in an abusive relationship. So we wanna break some of those myths, abusive relationships, might primarily still happen between male and females where the male might be the abuser, but actually it can happen in same sex relationships. And of course, a woman can be the abusive person within a relationship as well. Every year, students at college are adversely affected by being in an abusive relationship. 
this is currently happening amongst your peers somewhere and we want to stop it from happening amongst your peers. So how can we recognize it? What should we be looking for? There are a few examples here on this poster of things, but this is not an exhaustive list. So obviously some of the things we've mentioned, insults and put downs, playing mind games or being made to feel humiliated. Intimidation, so intimidation being used against you, and that can be threats of violence or not just abusing you, but abusing your pets or other people. Uh, treating you like a servant, so making you feel like they are the person in control and having to follow out their orders or their demands. Um, they might make or carry out threats. They could threaten to leave or, as we mentioned before, harm, threaten to harm themselves if you leave them. If there are children in a relationship, often that can be used as a threat against the um, from the abuser. And isolation, quite often one of the signs of abuse is the escalating isolation of the person being abused. So one of the things we have to consider about what's relevant to us is this, the Serious Crime Act of 2015. So in December 2015, this law created a new criminal offence and it stated that controlling or co coercive behaviour in intimate or familial relationships was punishable by a maximum prison sentence of five years. So this was a new recognition that it wasn't just about physical abuse, that actually controlling and coercive behaviour were punishable by prison sentences. And this law applies to everyone over 16. So that means that even relationships between teenagers, people in their late teens, are, are under this law. And that means it applies to students here at Barton Peveril. It covers situations, for example, like if a boyfriend or a girlfriend doesn't physically hit their partner, but is abusive using some of the things that we just mentioned before. The Child Prosecution Service um, shared some guidelines with some indications that someone may be in an abusive relationship. And some of these might be things that actually we might be able to see here at college if somebody was in a relationship that was abusive. They may stop or change the way that they're socialising. So that's something that you as their friends might be best placed to see. Physical or mental health deterioration or a change in their attendance, they might suddenly disappear from college and college lessons. Um, they seem to be behaving like they're treading eggshells around their partner. They don't want to upset the other person at all. So all of their decisions become about not hurting that person and not upsetting them. They go along with things that they don't want to because they're frightened to raise issues or disagree with their partner. So they agree to behave or dress or act in certain ways or go places just to please their partner, even if it doesn't make them happy or comfortable. And that last one in particular ties in with what we've been looking at with consent in college as well. So in this summer, the BBC released this short film about abusive relationships. And it was really widely praised for its approach because it really explores how even on social media, um, you might look like you have a good life, but that might be masking issues, but also how your social media might be being used or could be used in an, in an, in an abusive relationship as well. Um, it's about 16 minutes. So what I suggest you do is rather than me play it now and it has poor sound quality, we might pause this video from me at this point and your teacher could open it and play it or ask you to play it now at home. Um, obviously, when we're looking at this kind of material, we have to consider the fact that it might trigger um, some things for us. So please make sure that if you do find anything like this upsetting, you talk about it, you contact the health and wellbeing department, you speak with your tutor and that you reflect um, in a positive way on how, how do you deal with your feelings in response to this. As you're watching this particular video, this, this film, short film, I want you to reflect on what were the signs of abuse, particularly the early signs of abuse in this relationship and how did it escalate? Because one of the things that we really need to consider is that 
abuse rarely starts with physical abusive activities at the beginning it's a gradual escalation until the person feels like they can't escape okay so if you've watched the film here's the next things to reflect on you probably saw some of these examples of controlling or coercive behavior so as opposed to the physical abuse this was where the character of ed was really trying to control her isolating someone by stopping them or limiting their access to family and friends. So that's that whole idea, isn't it, of making them feel like they're letting you down if they don't spend time with you, that you don't want them to be with their friends and therefore being overly possessive. Uh, monitoring their time. Again, we saw that example in this film. Monitoring them online, tracking their apps, tracking their phone, hacking their social media or going onto it when they aren't there um, controlling where they go, who they see, what they should wear. So there's that early example, wasn't there, where her friend suggested one dress. She picked a different one. Uh, putting them down and making them feel worthless. Having rules that someone must stick to, which are unreasonable, humiliating or degrading, can be another sign of abuse. Controlling someone financially. Um, threatening to reveal private information about someone, e.g. outing them. And unfortunately, we've also seen an increase in things like revenge porn and photographs, intimate photographs that people have shared with a partner, then being threatened to be used against them. Threatening, therefore, to damage their reputation, damaging their property. Threatening to hurt their pet can be a sign of abuse and threatening to hurt them. Um, again, in the there's another little video here that's a couple of minutes long. Um, if you want to watch it now, again, pause this and then you can open the link. It's about two minutes and it's just a small scene from a couple in their bedroom and how it goes from what appears to be um, kind of an acceptable relationship to an unacceptable relationship and actually quite quickly in this case. So a couple of myths really quickly to finish off uh, that we want to break. Uh, the first one is this myth, all couples argue it's not domestic abuse, it's just a normal relationship. So in reality, abuse and disagreement are not the same things. Of course you can disagree with someone that you're in a relationship with and you might kind of discuss or debate some of those disagreements. Different opinions are completely normal and completely acceptable in healthy relationships. You don't have to agree on everything. You can have a respectful relationship even if you don't always agree with each other. But abuse is not about disagreement. It's the use of that physical, sexual, emotional or psychological violence or threats in order to try and govern and control that other person, to control their thinking, their opinions, their emotions, their behaviours. So just ask yourself when you're having that argument with someone, was it just that disagreement? and it was acceptable and it was a healthy disagreement? <laughs> or actually, is there a control being sought by the other person? When abuse is involved, th this is not a discussion between equals because there is fear of saying or doing the wrong thing involved. And the other myth I want to break today is this uh, idea that people say, well, if it was that bad, they'd leave, they'd just end the relationship, they'd break up if it was abusive. The reality is that people often stay in abusive relationships and often for many different reasons. It can be difficult for someone to leave an abusive partner because the relationship began as falling in love and that's something that they feel they don't want to break or hurt. Abuse rarely starts at the beginning of a relationship. It's established gradually over time and that's why it becomes harder to leave or break with, up with that person. But it doesn't mean you can't break up with that person or it or that it has to go on and that it can't end. Which leads us to this, how can we help? Well, if you think this is happening to your friend or your family, talk to them about it. Can you help them to realize that it's abuse? Have they actually reflected? The friends in the video that we watched earlier were trying, weren't they, to point to the things in the relationship that weren't right. You can take that role on in, in terms of a one way of supporting them. It doesn't mean, though, that you have to be out there alone because you can report it. You can report it at college, you can report it to social services, and you can report it to the police. 
After all, it is a criminal offence. If you feel this is happening to you, think seriously about, reflect. Can your partner change? Will they change? Or do you need to get out? Is this just a disagreement? Or are you in the early stages of abuse or even the later stages? And again, if you feel like you're struggling to walk away, speak to someone at college, speak to someone in social services, speak to someone in the police. There are lots of um, websites available to you, Refuge, and there is also a national um, domestic abuse helpline that is open 24 hours. So if you feel like you can't talk to someone here, you can always phone them to get some advice. Remember, love is a glass which shatters when it's held too tightly or too loosely, but it shouldn't hurt. So I'm just going to finish by playing this little video. Thank you for listening and for being respectful when it comes to this particular subject and obviously we hope that um, you never need this particular advice because the relationships that you're in and amongst are healthy but just in case please know that you're not alone and there are various support systems out there you just need to access them thank you